Good morning. I'm Dave Apsley. I'm a forester and a natural resources specialist with Ohio State University Extension. Today I'm joining you from our woodland property here in Jackson County and I'd like to introduce you to shingle oak. Shingle oak is very unusual because of the type of leaves. It's, a, it's not a super common tree in Ohio. You'll find it in pockets. Our property has lots of them, especially down here low on the slope. Uh, just out of the flood plain and on the next little bench where there's still quite a bit of moisture. You typically don't find it in deep in the woodlands. It's more of an edge type tree and probably in areas that were historically disturbed from past land use like agriculture. This property had some heavy cattle grazing on it uh, well back into the 50s. So shingle oak does occur throughout Ohio and it occurs predominantly here in the central states region. So from about western Pennsylvania out to Missouri and down to Kentucky and Tennessee is where you're going to find the most shingle oak. So how do we identify shingle oak? Well first of all it's very unusual in that the leaves unlike any of the other oaks do not have lobes. So they have this simple leaf. The leaf tends to be between about three and seven inches in length. Um, most of the ones I see are probably four to six. They have no teeth around the edge and they have no lobing like we think of for most oaks. What does give us a clue that it's in the red oak group that is if you look at the leaf at the very tip you're going to have a little bristle and that's very typical for the tree species in the red or black oak group but the only place you're going to find the bristle in this is at the very tip. So that would distinguish it from say persimmon or black gum which many people might confuse this with. The other thing is this leaf has a very glossy surface. It's very thick and kind of leathery. It's very glossy and the leaves are very persistent. So you'll find these well into the winter even after most trees have lost their leaves and they're, they've all turned brown. They'll hang on for quite a while. Um, but how do we know for sure that it's an oak and how do we separate it say from persimmon or black gum? Well the first thing I'd do is look at the twigs and at the very tip of the twigs all the oak species that we have in Ohio are going to have a cluster of buds. So when I look at this tip of this twig, I'm going to see five or six buds all clustered up towards the tip. These are reddish brown. They look very similar to northern oak or pin oak buds, but they tend to be a little bit smaller and again clustered at the very tip. As we go down the twig, the leaves are going to alternate sides and the buds will alternate sides. And again, you'll have individual buds on the sides of the twigs, but clusters of buds at the tip. Another good ID characteristic that will help you know for sure that this is an oak is that it does produce acorns. It's actually a very abundant acorn producer most years. I find that almost every year you're going to find some. In years like this year, we're going to have a bumper crop of acorns, it looks like. They're very small, rarely much more than, say, five inches five-eighths of an inch in diameter. They look a lot like a pin oak acorn. They have a very shallow cap and uh, again they look a lot like a northern red oak acorn but they're going to be much smaller. Um, and then another clue that's almost diagnostic for this species, especially in nature, is that they often have these horned oak galls. It's a gall that is caused by a wasp and you'll notice these galls that can be golf ball sized or larger throughout the crown of these trees. Um, most galls don't cause major damage to trees, but they can stress the twigs that are beyond the gall. So if you get a tree that's just covered up with these galls, it can start to stress the tree and cause some problems. And then another characteristic of this tree is the bark. To me, the bark looks a lot like black oak, uh, very similar. Um, it's not a good self pruner at all. So a lot of times when you look at the lower portion of this tree, you're going to see a lot of small limbs that are still hanging on this tree, even after they're no longer alive. And this has actually got some live branches down low as well because it's on an edge. So it's not very valuable in the forest products industry. Um, it's full of defect and rarely makes really valuable wood. Historically, it was used for shingles and its name, its scientific name is Quercus imbricaria, which means overlapping. So they actually did use this wood to make shake shingles for roofs. It was easy to split and it was fairly durable. So that's where it gets its name, Shingle Oak. Thank you so much for your time today and please take at least part of your day to enjoy it in the woods.